Hello, welcome to my history book reviews number three. As usual, I've got three history books to share with you and review for you and discuss. Now, all three of these books I was kindly sent by the publisher, which is May Global Publishing. They featured in a book haul a little while back, which I'll link up there. And I remember when I did the haul, I got so many comments from you guys saying how much you were really intrigued by the books, how you've already added some of these to your wish list, and you really wanted some reviews. So here they are. And for those of you that are Tudor and women's history lovers, you will not be disappointed by today's reviews. So to get things started, I have The Turbulent Crown, The Story of Tudor Queens by Roland Huey. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. I did ask how you pronounce it. I hope I've got it right. So to quote what this book says on the back, 10 remarkable women, one remarkable era, and it certainly is. I love the idea of this book. So this book starts with Elizabeth of York. It filters down the six wives of Henry VIII, on to Lady Jane Grey, to Mary I, and of course finishing with Elizabeth I. We finish with Elizabeth I because that's where the Tudor period ends, because she was the Virgin Queen, she had no children. We then go on to the Stuart period. I love the idea of this book, it is fantastic. We have just these array of women and they are magnificent and I don't truly appreciate them until they're in this book all together and it's fantastic. Let's be honest, this is a beautiful book. On the outside we have this beautiful image of Mary I and Elizabeth I, which I really adore. And then on the inside, each part, so each section featuring each woman, starts like this. So we have a Tudor rose, which is actually there for each chapter, so that stays put. And then we have part whatever it is, their name, a bit of a quote, and then, and then an image as well. There's also images throughout the book. It has been beautifully designed and great care has really been taken over of this book. For me, what makes this book work so well is quite simply the writing style. For me, it almost feels like Agatha Christie in the sense that there's only about 50 pages or so for each of these women, which isn't a lot. But what Roland has the ability to do in his sentences, he writes such short sentences, but he says so much, and that reminds me of Agatha Christie's writing style. This book is perfect for any lovers of the Tudor history, any lovers of women's history, or both. The next book that I have to share with you is Catherine Howard, A New History by Connor Byrne. This book I had sat on my wish list for years, so I'm very grateful that they sent it to me. This is a brand new, spanking new biography of Catherine Howard. This strips everything bare. It's almost as if what Connor's done is he's managed to turn everything off in his brain, what I thought he knew about Catherine Howard, get a big old sheet of paper, get all the primary source uh, evidence available to him and just work off that. This is completely non-judgmental. He's not making up these wild theories. He's just going off the evidence which is available to us, which is limited because she wasn't that old when she died. She wasn't wife of Henry's for very long. So we have to go off the evidence which is there. And that's what Connor's done. And by doing that, this book looks at Catherine in a completely new light. He's not judging her at all. He's looking at her through the evidence in which we have. This book was lovely. It was brilliant. It's fresh, revitalising, I felt like I got to know the real Catherine, which I don't get to see that often in the history books. So if you want to learn about the real Catherine Howard, read this, because she lives within the pages. And finally, last but certainly not least, by the same author, I have Queenship in England, 1308 to 1485, Gender and Power in the Late Middle Ages. This is just a small little textbook. This has a few pages on each of the wives slash queen consorts, whatever you want to call them, of the kings of the late Middle Ages. There are, I think, nine of them, if I remember rightly, in total, women which we explore, and there's just a few pages of them, just to kind of wet your whistle, just to dip your toe in the water sort of thing to learn about them. The women that feature in this book are really interesting. Some of them are quite similar, some of them are very different. Some have a big impact, some have a much smaller impact but they're all so interesting to learn and read about. This book was perfect for me because my love of history started with the Tudors and now I've kind of progressed forward in time and learned about the Georgians, the Stuarts, etc, etc, but now I need to go back and this was perfect for me because easy little book to read, I'm a lover of women's history, this was just perfect. 
This book I think is perfect for if you're like me and you want to learn about the Middle Ages, but also it's perfect if you wanted to get into women's history. This book is a perfect little stepping stone where you can read about the Middle Ages and think, oh, I want to read about so-and-so next. So for me, I think I'm going to start with Anne Neville because she was the wife of Richard III, if you didn't know. Um, she sounded really interesting. I was like, ooh, you're intriguing. So I think that's where I'm going to go to next. If you want to get your hands on any of the books that I've mentioned today, they're in the description bar below for you. Click on the link, it'll take you straight to the book depository. Yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if any of these have now made it to your wish list. I'll be really intrigued to know. So that's it for today's video. Take care and I shall see you soon for the next one. Bye for now.